for chapter 11. Radicals is chapter 11. All right, do you guys remember simplifying radical expressions? How do we simplify square roots? You. You break them. The tree. Okay. Yeah. Or yeah. you use a good calculator, which probably a lot of more of you should have done on this chapter. Um, if you don't have a good calculator, you got to wait to borrow one or just do it by hand. You guys all done 25? 25? 25. So this becomes 5 squared of 5. Squared of five. But what do we do with the n? We leave it inside. Okay, yeah. It's 1 is the power, 2 is the root. You do 1 divided by 2. Since 2 is too big, too big. to divide 1 by, <laughs> then it doesn't really do any, can't really do anything. If, if this was n squared or n cubed, we could divide it. But since two is, 1 is not big enough to divide by 2, you just kind of leave it alone. So it just stays square root of n. So what if it was like square root of n squared? Then you take out one. Two divided by two is one. Because yep. basically square root means what times itself equals this. Yep. N times n equals that. Uh, but what if it's square root of n cubed? Then we take two out of the You do three divided by two. Remainder is one with the remainder of one. Okay, I'm gonna open the door if we need to not be loud. There's no air in here. No. The, the AC mic turned on. Dude, I can't hear a single thing. Everyone just said it was like somebody was not here to hear a room from the floor. Just kidding. Oh. oh, well, I mean, like, as long as you say it sounds cold, uh, that's not really cool. what makes sense. Keep this room moderate. Alright, so, <laughs> number three, just take off the square root of 512k squared. What in the heck goes into 512? I think there's a, like a ton of twos. Yeah, lots of twos go into it. Tells 
Basically, it's 4 divided by 2. K2. Two. 2 come out, nothing left behind, no remainder, so it's just 6k squared. So same thing as the last time, it's something cute. So one comes out, one's left behind. One comes out, one's left behind. Can you go back to this? What are the odds I'm gonna trip over this? You just do this in the last day. <laughs> should I give you food or you should, should you be giving me food? You oh, Mr. Jordan, I have some on here. I have a quarter. You want it? Sure. I'll, I'll put it in a tip jar by the door. Thank you. Yeah. What is it? No, don't get the quarter out. Oh, I should open that. Okay. And then you're giving him money for his food. What? It's a I should go to give a card for chili. Oh, fancy. I think. Chili's the only thing that you can go to. They got good grilled cheese there. Trust you. You got a Chili's and ordered grilled cheese. That's so good. Cool. Cool. Yeah, like, chicken strips. Uh, uh, they're chicken strips. Quesadilla. Wait, I don't like Chili's, but it's chicken alfredo. They literally have everything there. How can you not? Okay, but salmon was in one. Okay. Uh, and Dr. Pepper. Let's. Actually, let's just uh, do 13, then we'll go on to the next page. What's so, uh, did you already do it? Do you want to do absolute right? Yeah. Okay, 11 is 25 times 3, so it's 5 squared of 3. But the x comes out, so it's 5x squared of 3y. What? Oh. Do you think we're going to show us on She. Yeah. Okay, number 13. Shannon, what's the square root of 16? 4. Negative four plus negative negative plus four. Just four. You should have stopped at the beginning. But you said sixteen. What? Yeah, square root of sixteen is four. Mm -hmm. What's the square root of u to the fourth? Which number? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, Thirteen. U squared. U squared. So it's four u squared, and then what's the square root of v to the third? V. And then v in the box. V and yeah, one v left behind. Ooh. 
That's so what? sad. Like, the one being that's left in the box. Okay, flipping pages, we're skipping, we're changing to uh, adding and subtracting. What's the rules with adding and subtracting? It has to be the same kind, same square root, same level. So it's kind of like adding and subtracting like terms. So what's negative 5 squared to 3 minus 3 squared to 3? Negative 8 squared to 3. Negative 8 squared to 3 is correct. Wait, hold on, sorry. What was it? Negative 8 squared to 3. This page also, a lot of these you can use a calculator on unless it says cubed root. So like 9 and 11. Or if there's letters somewhere, you can't use that. So what is it? Negative uh, 8 squared to 3. Number 3, pretty similar. It's negative 4 squared to 6 minus negative. 1 squared to 6. Yes. Negative five. Yeah. Oh yeah, I love number seven. That's always the fun. Seven, yeah, you actually have to do some work, I guess, oh. unless you have a calculator. Number five, what should I do? Minus them all. Oh. Okay, you could put them all together. Negative three minus three minus three is negative nine squared to 27, but... But what? 27 simplifies. Right, 27 is big enough to have some stuff yet that goes into it. It's like 3 squared of 3. Right. So it's 3 squared of 3, but what do I do with that negative 9 that's in front? Multiply. Multiply. Negative 9 times 3 is negative, tw negative 27 Interesting. squared of 3. I don't know how, but I got that answer. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, number seven, even if you have a good calculator, you might want to practice number seven by hand because number nine is upcoming. You guys see what I'm saying? So even if you have a good calculator, you might want to try number seven by hand as practice for number nine. So I'm going to give you guys a minute and a half head start, see how far you can get on number seven. Five turned into three squared to five, so negative two times three, I got negative six squared to five. Square to twenty turned into two squared to five, so I got negative six, negative three times three, negative six squared to five for that, and I didn't do anything with negative two squared to six. Is there anything else I can do? All of them? No. The first two terms are like terms. So negative six minus six. Negative 12 squared of 5 minus 2 squared of 6. Yeah. Okay, 
Hopefully that helps prepare us for number nine, the one that the calculator cannot do because it's cube groups. So actually, nine has kind of a trick that I want to talk about. Um, what's this right here? Not. Not real. Okay, because nothing times itself equals negative nine, right? Okay. You plug in your calculator, your calculator would probably say error. Yeah. Um, so what's this? Yeah, it is real, but exact, what exactly is it? Two. Negative two. So the reason this works is because three negatives multiply to a negative. So this is possible. Two negatives do not multiply to a negative. Not possible. So the point of that is on number nine, this cube root of negative three, that is possible. Basically, all you do, though, you don't simplify cube root of three, but you can take the negative out and put it on the front. So that first term, this is a trick we hadn't really used, but it's more of an algebra two trick. I think I accidentally printed off an algebra two sheet here, but it's kind of all the same. So you take that negative out in, from in front and put it with the negative that's already there, and that first term just becomes positive. And then the other terms you have to simplify. So I'm going to give you a minute and a half to try. Okay, so um, I got for the middle one three times three times three times three times two. So remember, if it's a cube root, you have to get three of them for it to get out. So I took a three out, and then it become it became six two times three. Whoops, screwed that one up, didn't I? And then what was left behind was three times two is a six. Okay, over here, nine times nine, three times three times three times three, I took a three out, so that became nine, and there was a three left behind. And then these two are like terms. A tough one, huh? I will probably put one tough one on there. Like a key group problem, I mean. And a few square root problems. All right, let's go ahead and keep on rolling. Switch pages here. Uh, do we need to, yeah, we need to do some on the back. So, when you're multiplying the rules and dividing, 
You can multiply square roots times square roots, or cube roots times cube roots, or normal numbers times normal numbers, but you never really mix. Like if I had five times square root of six or something, that's just five square root of six, right? It doesn't really simplify. So, but if it's square root of five times square root of six, then that is square root of 30. Still chapter 11. All the square root stuff is chapter 11. Did I put chapter 12? Yeah, I put chapter 12. We might not get much of chapter 12 done today. It's the test that you guys just got back. Like factoring, quadratic formula. So you might want to put quadratic formula on your page of notes. Remember, you guys won't be in here taking the test, so... There won't be like stuff on the board. Uh, also, and we'll, we'll be doing this today, but these are three formulas that you'll need from chapter 11 as well. You should change the dates. There. How's that? That's right. It's just me. That's perfect. Is it the nice formula? The formula that we need to go? 679. All these right here instead. Why do you even call it? Because I don't see blue. Um, um, uh, it's hot. Probably you girls <laughs> picked it up and moved it somewhere. You don't need this. Somebody stole my blue. Got you my dog. She's a good dog too. Um, so, number 13, cube root times cube root, it'd be just cube root of negative 60. And just like that last problem, you could take the negative out, I don't know that really matters. Uh, and 60, if you break it down, there's no triples in it. So it doesn't simplify, so it just stays like that. However, number 15, square root of 6 times square root of 2, square root of 12 does simplify, right? So like 2 square root of 3. Yeah, it's 2 square root of 3. Okay, what should we do on 17? What kind of problem is that? Distribution. Distribution, right. So when you're multiplying, you can do that normal three in the front times the normal four inside the parentheses. So what will the first term become? 12 square root of three. Minus, okay, three square root of three times three square root of five. So you can do three times three, since all this stuff just means times, 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 right? And because order of multiplication doesn't matter, I can put stuff together that I know. 3 times 3 is 9. Square root of 3 times square root of 5 is square root of 15. Did you guys get it? Again, a since this answer is not too complicated, that means a calculator could have gotten it. Find calculators. So I just did the normal number times the normal number, 3 times 3, and the square root times the square root, and got the square root. Uh, does this simplify? No, 15 is 5 times 3, so it doesn't reduce or anything. Anyway, that's, that's all it can do. Why don't you guys try number 19, and I'll, we'll see if you got it right here in a second. Yeah. Three times four is twelve. So it's twelve over three. Minus, and then for this part I did three times three is square root three times square root five. So uh, your calculator switched the order, but see how it's the same thing. Yeah. Okay.
19, you got 4 square root of 90, distributing 15 times 6, and then 4 square root of 75, 15 times 5. And then the square roots I just broke down. This is 3 square root of 10, so it's 4 times 3, 12 square root of 10. This is 4 times 5, 20 square root of 3. That's it. Let's jump down to 23 because that one's kind of tricky. Um, yeah, it's a FOIL problem, right, on 23? So when you do the first, you got square root of 2a times 7 square root of 2a. What is square root of 2a times square root of 2a? It is 2a. Well, it's 4a squared, but what's the square root of 4a squared? 2a. When you take a square root times itself, when you square a square root, the square roots cancel out. So it's just 2a. But there was that 7 in front. You guys see what I'm saying? So it's 2a times 7, which is 14a for the first. You guys follow that? So for the first, the first terms, I get it. square root of 2a times square root of 2a is 2a times the 7 that was also there, 2a times 7 is 14a. Okay, what would the outside be on 23, the outside terms? Negative 5 times square root of 2a, right? What does that mean? It don't mix. Negative 5 square root of 2a. What's the inside? Negative 5 times 7 square root of 2a. Negative 35 square root of 2a. Good, yes. Negative 35 square root of 2a. And the last is negative 5 times negative 5. 25. Positive 25. Okay, is there anything else I can do? Yeah. A couple of these are like terms. Those two guys. So 14a stays the same. I have minus 5 of these, minus 35 of these. Negative 40 of those. Probably be a foil on there, probably be a distributive, distributive problem on there. Okay, next page. This is still chapter 11. Oh, really? Uh, chapter 12 starts on the very last piece of paper. So we got two sides of chapter 11 left, and then one, two sides of chapter 12. So we probably won't talk too much about chapter 12, maybe a little bit. Okay, Pythagorean theorem works on, if you don't have this in your notes, you probably should write it down, unless you just feel really confident. Works on right triangles. A and B stand for the legs of the right triangle, the two smaller sides around the 90 degree angle. C stands for the hypotenuse. So if the two little legs squared should add up to the hypotenuse squared, the big side squared. So on number one, they're saying, is this a right triangle, basically? So how can I tell? Pythagorean theorem. Does six squared plus eight squared equal nine squared? Question mark. No. No. Because so 36 plus 64 is not 81. Right. 36 plus 64 is, not, is 100, not not 81. So no, that is not a right triangle. But on number... Oh, wow, that one might is the same exact problem. It has correct answer. Right. Number three is almost identical. It's does 6 squared plus 8 squared equal 10 squared? Yes. Yeah, that's, that's the right one. Whoops. Yeah, it's 100 equals 100. So yeah, that would have to be Pythagorean theorem only works on right triangles. So number three has to be a right triangle. So on five, does 6.4 squared plus 12 squared equal 12.2 squared? That one's a no. We'll just keep moving here. So how do I solve it on number seven? And that's really what I want to ask. How do I find the missing side? We do four squared plus eight squared equals something squared. 
Four squared plus a squared equals two squared. Two squared. Two squared. Whatever letter you want to use. Um, Square root trick, it should be plus or minus. Something else we got wrong on some of our homework or test. Um, but since we're talking about the length of a side of a triangle, negative doesn't make sense. So we don't have to use that. Square root of 80, I think we simplified this one already. I'm just going to fast forward to the answer. Was 4 square root of 5. And actually, if you look the directions on this part, it says round to the nearest tenth. So they actually wanted the decimal answer, not the four square root of five answer. But I don't really care. Generally, you should follow the directions, though. But on the final, will that matter? Probably not. No. Okay. So why don't? How about everybody try number nine and go ahead and put the decimal answer because this one won't come out very nice. Everybody try number nine. Oh, I just said, so you could do 6.4 squared plus 12 squared, does that equal 12.2 squared? Just like these. They just didn't draw a picture for me. But it's the same as these. And I said, no, it's not going to work. For now. It's not any different, so I just kind of skipped over it. How do you do decimal again on these? Well, you have to have a calculator. Oh, I don't have There's one behind you. Probably like 12.1, I'm guessing. 12.2. 12.2. Since they said put a decimal, we can just put a decimal in. I'm writing this down right now. Yeah. 
You don't want to over clutter it. Uh, kind of like an open book test type of thing because people try to read the entire book. You just want to put the most important things on there. 10.4. Things that make sense to you. What is it? 10.4. 10.4. Okay, so let's flip to the next page. Midpoint and distance. So, yeah, these need to be on your notes unless you feel super confident about just knowing it. I doubt anybody does. Uh, so basically the midpoint, you just av average the x coordinates to get the x coordinate. You average the y coordinates to get the y coordinate. And then distance is this messy thing. So we have to use x squared first, not x1. Hmm? Okay, this, this little two and one are not exponents, they're just like the second x. Yeah, I mean like Actually, the order doesn't matter because if you subtract numbers in opposite order, like seven minus five is two, five minus seven is negative two, but when you square two or negative two, they both come out four. So the order doesn't really matter. All right. Well, number one, what are the coordinates of the leftmost point? Negative two, negative one. Negative two, negative one. And what are the coordinates of the rightmost point? Positive two, positive two. Two, two. So I'm just going to plug in stuff to the midpoint formula. Average of the x values, comma, average of the y values. What is negative 2 plus 2 Zero. divided by 2? What is negative 1 plus 2 Zero. divided by 2? One half. One half. One half. That, that is it. Okay, why don't you guys try number 3? Since they drew a picture, you could, you could kind of cheat and just look at the picture, but I want you guys to practice using the midpoint formula. So there's not going to be pictures in the test? Probably not. It'll probably look more like number five. Okay. And there's, I think there's like a 99% chance that this will be on the test okay. once, like one of them. I have that ham sandwich stuck in my head.
two and a half, negative two and a half. Okay, on number five, even though it says find the midpoint, we actually need to do distance. distance. So I'll try. So we have to do just our exponent. Yeah. yeah. So the x is going front. Doesn't the order doesn't really matter here because it has to be x two minus x one. So I'm just going to put negative three minus four for number five is squared plus negative five minus five squared. Just got to be careful when you're plugging it in because there's a minus there, there's a plus there, and it's just kind of tricky. Uh, this is basically the quadratic formula. Yeah. Yeah, smart people figured it out. Hey, we had this one before. Square one forty nine. Oh, we had this problem a couple times. Whoa. Okay, does that, anybody have a question on that one? Wait, wait, why does it, sorry, why does it say midpoint if we're doing the distance? Well, because I, because it didn't say distance, we need to do an example. Is that where it's going to say the final? Uh, no, it's going to say find the distance between the two points. Can you leave it as a square or do you simplify it? Um, this one doesn't simplify. If they say to round to the nearest tenth or something, go ahead and turn it to a decimal. This one doesn't really do anything, though. Okay. Last page, really quick. Oh, the square root is 149. Where's my sandwich? Yeah, that's, all that's the best we can do. Okay, number one, how does that factor? Yeah. What goes into 16 that adds that's up to negative eight? kind brother. What goes into 16 that adds up to negative eight? Negative four. Negative four and negative four. Okay, here's what a lot of us forgot to do on the test. What x values make all this equal to zero? Four. Okay, that's the answer, not the factor. You guys did that. Huge problems Okay. Um. <coughs> If we were solving 9 using quadratic formula, what would the A, B, and C be? A number 9. 5 and then negative 27. 5, negative 27, 28. Why is negative 27 second? Because, because it has a K. Because it has the K and it's on the wrong side. So it's negative 27 is the B value. Positive 28 is the C value. And you just gotta plug that stuff in. Oh, it's almost time to go. Alright, you guys put your chairs up and go. So I just find it very rude that 